Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a match in the rather beautiful Furutaka Tier 5 Imperial Japanese Navy Cruiser. This is one of the later matches I had in that ship. And it's all about dodging torpedoes while destroying cruisers. Not cruisers, destroyers. So, I decided to head off to A and first thing about the Furutaka you might notice if you get the ship is it has new guns, larger guns, not the 152 millimeters you had until the Kuma. You have 203 millimeter guns now, which is nice, but only on the first look when you notice these things have a massive reload time, like 13 seconds. and. Compared to all the American cruisers up to tier 7 or maybe even 8 that use the 155mm cannons and up to the Kuma, you can't use the captain's skill anymore that will give you 10% reloading time, which I find a tiny bit unfair. Torpedoes away just for, you know, why not? Yeah, I kind of find it a little bit unfair that on the American cruisers you can use that skill for just one skill point for up to 10% reload speed and on the Japanese ship you just can't you will have to find some other way the only thing is there even a reload skill I don't think there is a reload skill there might be some very expensive module later on for like two or three million credits that gives you 13% reload time and reduces your turret rotation speed but I wouldn't use that on Japanese cruisers because the turret rotation speed is rather horrible as it is. For the match I'm capping A and as you might notice there is already someone capping A so I'm not the first one here nobody will cap start. but we will have to engage the enemy sooner or later. There is a Kuma, but he's way too far away, so there must be a destroyer somewhere around the corner. I hope he's running into my torpedoes, but I don't think so. The enemy team has taken the lead. Yeah, what you will also notice on the Japanese cruiser starting tier 5 is the turrets turn very, very slow. And the turret architecture is not always very nice for you since as you will notice now, when you look down at the little graphic here, when you change sides, only turret 1, 2, and 4, I think, aim forward, the other one aim backwards. So when you switch side from front left to front right, or the other way around, your turrets will have to rotate all the way around. And here comes the first bunch of torpedoes. The destroyer evades very quick and I notice, oops, I'm on a good way to driving into those, but Rutaka is very nice at turning. Another thing when you get from the Furutaka to the, what was the tier 6 one, the Aoba, you don't get more guns. You will have the exact same amount of guns, which is 6, you will just have them on less turrets, so for the Aoba has three turrets with two guns, and here come even more torpedoes. St. Louis sitting there shooting the island. Good job, bro. This island will be no harm to us. Yes, give it some more. An enemy St. Louis. Two hits out of four. Yeah, why not? Rear turrets can shoot from that angle. But the whole guns and shooting on that ship was pretty fun. I fire some more on the St. Louis but notice there are some more important targets around. I give him some torpedoes and then scamper off to do something else. Yeah, you see. Five torpedoes incoming. Lots of torpedoes incoming. There we have our own destroyer. 
enemy earn first blood by sinking him. Just drive around him so I don't stop my ship. And we hit enemy and sunk. sunk. The St. Louis. Nice one there. Cool guys don't look at explosions anymore. So I should have actually looked at the explosion. And there goes the Kuma and I am totally lucky. I didn't really dodge those torpedoes. I just had luck that the Nicholas didn't know his limited range of his torpedoes. And now it's time for him to earn some shots. And lucky me, he's just driving to the end. One thing, even without the reload speed, while we get more torpedoes incoming, while the reload speed is quite crap, the damage of the 203mm cannons is really, really nice, especially on destroyers. He was mainly sunk, sunk by the bombers, but look at that guy, the Isokaze. Full health, 10,000. One hit. He was hit by something else, I think. But still, lots and lots of damage. And even more torpedoes. Hello. Yeah, on the Japanese cruisers, you spend quite a lot of time thinking, where will I go next so my turrets won't have to rotate that much? And even more torpedoes. And dodged again. It's time for him to get some damage in. Don't mind him shuffling around. It's just due to and there he goes, Enemy devastating strike. Torpedo for the destroyer. That's what he deserves. Yeah, you spend quite a lot of time rotating your turrets, and especially when you're turning the ship yourself, if you move more or you steer more than halfway to one side, your turrets will have trouble keeping up. So your choice is to mount that what the 500, 500,000 or 1 million credits module that gives you 15% turret turning speed, but the downside is it reduces your loading time by 10%. I thought it gives you that. I was very happy to have more reload speed, but no, it reduces the turning speed. So it's a bit of a trade off, but when I had the chance between firing a little bit slower, which is I think 13 instead of 12, or 11 instead of 10, or 12 instead of 11 seconds, it's not that much. Uh, if I had the choice between one second more reload and not being able to fire at all because I don't want to head straight for my targets or go in a straight line and be torpedoed or just shot it more easy, I choose the turning rotation speed. Turret rotation speed. And at this point, the match got quite boring. Actually, I will give you the short version here, which is basically driving and driving. I saw the aircraft carrier in the bottom right corner, that's why I'm there. You can also th see the aircraft clearly going somewhere down that line, so he must, he was last seen there, so he must be somewhere around there. Yeah, there are some ships, but all behind islands. Are they? So yes, driving, and even more driving, as the enemy aircraft carrier finally shows up, Harry Hirsch. I like that name, guess why. One more thing about the skills. I made a mistake, at least I thought I did, when skilling this captain, because there is a skill in the third row of the captain skills that gives you 20% torpedo acquisition range and since I'm not a native English speaking person I actually thought that means I get more range on my torpedoes you know like they despawn 20% later but no it just gives you 20% more visibility on torpedoes so when torpedoes get dropped you see them at about 5 kilometers and if you have the skill you see them at like 5.4 kilometers or whatever 20% of 5 kilometers are. Which is not as handy as more torpedo range, but it is very handy when you're driving a cruiser that is pretty big and turns very well, but not as well as a destroyer. And as you've seen in the beginning, when you see torpedoes earlier, you can evade way more better. 
And it also gives you the option to switch your hydrostatic surge for the defensive anti-air fire ability. I'm not sure the Furutaka has that, but at least the Aoba on tier 6 has it. And that you can activate, it will also be active for 40 seconds and will, once pressed, shoot down planes like flies. It is really, really effective versus planes. You may have just saw the torpedo bombers going down there, so he is sitting in that quadrant straight where I'm going. Uh, so yes, defensive anti-air firing shoots planes down like flies and also when torpedo bombers and normal bombers are in range, while that ability is active, it will spread their aiming area quite a lot. So if a torpedo bomber is near, he will spread his torpedoes all around and you will only be attacked by basically one, the other ones will just go off. It helps, also helps you at the beginning of the match when you have a aircraft carrier and it is under attack by two other aircraft carriers or something like that. Because then they will have quite a lot, uh, hard time of getting him down. So yeah, very nice ability. I used that on my tier 7 Miyoko. I also used, did I use it on the, on the Alba? I think not, I switched it on. And there he finally is. He does his way. Shoot down one of his planes. He didn't even try to bomb me, I think. Did he? Oh no, wait. There they come. I think they, they are about to land and not take off again, so... Bad luck for him. His own secondary guns firing at those torpedoes are not. Need to be careful not to get bombed by them. Get shot in here. Shoot down one more plane and this one he can't evade. Sorry, Mr. Hirsch. There you go. Sunk in enemy aircraft carrier. might not have given the attack order yet, because they didn't want to bomb me. So, I will give you the short version of the Fighter end of the ready for takeoff. That got quite boring in the end. I spent some time hunting aircraft. The enemy, what is it, Wyoming, went over to A, tried to cap it, and got sunk by torpedo bombers. So, how did the match turn out? Turned out quite nice with 207,000 credits, 4,100 XP, a devastating strike and lots and lots of stuff. Second on team, 8 aircraft shot out, 4 kills, just 12,000 damage though. 3 torpedo hits with <laughs> double that damage. Yeah, it could have done more but the beginning was pretty exciting for me. I had quite a, a lot of fun in that match. So, that was that. Probably there won't be that much more for Otaka videos since I don't have that in my port anymore. I needed the port slot. So, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.